Happy Hour. Damn, son, where'd you find this? This, this, this should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. Listen to me, Randy. It doesn't matter what you look like on the outside, whether you're white or black or Sasquatch even. As long as you're a dream. Listen to me, Randy. It doesn't matter what you look like on the outside, whether you're white or black or Sasquatch even. As long as you follow your dream, no matter how crazy or against the law it is. Except for Sasquatch. If you're Sasquatch, the rules are different. Forget it, Meatwad. I'm a circus freak. That's all I'll ever be. Whatever. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh, yes. This is Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. Hanging out with you and you. And don't think I forgot about you. Call the show and leave me a voicemail. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me. Hey, at Ryan Hoppy Radio. You can always email me. Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com bruh I'm always available yo what's up baby let's go we are heard on the quad pod network at qodpod.com slash ryan hoppy and z radio live every thursday at 5 p.m east coast time 4 p.m central hi if you've never heard this show my name is ryan hoppy and i am the authority on all things celebrity news as i record this show For the hardworking average Joe and Jane that grind in life. And oh, I never hold back. Happy Hot Topic! Kim Kardashian says Kanye West is causing her emotional distress in the estranged couple's latest divorce filing. Listen, I'm not a fly in their house. I don't know what the hell's going on, even though they don't live in the same house anymore. But let me tell you, the way that Kanye West is acting, if any other dude did this, they would be called psychotic. But when it's Kanye West, oh, he's being creative. I'm just rolling with it. In new court docs obtained by ET, the 41-year-old Skims founder says that she does very much desire to be divorced. Yeah, I would want to be divorced too if I had four kids with Kanye West. I would want to be divorced too. And he's so obsessive over her. I think he likes the idea of her because she literally made fun of him on SNL and then he used that in his Donda 2 music and it's like... It's like, bro, she's making you look like a bitch and you're promoting that? Telling the court that Kanye has been putting a lot of misinformation about their private matters and co-parenting on social media. I don't really know if it's misinformation. I think it's just information she doesn't want out there. Which has caused Kim emotional distress. Oh. It is what it is. Of course, all this comes after Ye publicly slammed Kim on Instagram, hurling a variety of accusations at her. I don't even know what the tactic is there that Kanye West is a sociopath that has not been good at music besides we off the grid, 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 grid in about 10 years has not made any good music. We off the grid, 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 grid. I think Kanye West should take his own advice. Um, Here's my thing though. It's very hard to feel bad for him because you knew what you were marrying and then even with Kim, I feel bad that he's obsessive in that, but why would you want to marry him? Oh, fame and it kind of blew up in your face including that she didn't provide the address for their daughter chicago's birthday party put security on him when he was playing with his son had him take a drug test after the party and that their eldest daughter north is on tiktok against his will uh, i think she should be allowed to do what she wants to do and uh kanye you relied off of kim to have your yeezy company take off so your kids are trying to have their company take off and they're eight years old and that's normal that's when business begins with the kardashians um what i'm saying is you're being a hypocrite you're getting mad about the wrong things and i don't even know why he does that thing where he blows up on social media like i don't know who he thinks he's impressing besides his dumb 
cult fan base. It's not a cult fan base like a TV show that was canceled after two years. Like his fan base is legitimately a cult. It's okay if you think he's one of the like greatest of all time. You can admit he's a bad person. Like I'm a fan of Don Imus from back in the day, and I know he said a lot of racist things, but I like his old show when he wasn't being racist. Same with Howard. Same with Opie and Anthony. All these radio guys that grew up listening to, they're not the best people, and I'm able to see that, but I like to emulate what they did in radio. You can do the same thing with Kanye. He's not a good father. He's not a good husband. He's not a good person. He probably treats people badly. It's about being able to see the flaws in your heroes. No, no friend. And like he's that's a TikTok of Kim Kardashian and uh North. Um the thing too is he brought the kids to the Super Bowl and they looked super uncomfortable, which I would be if my dad was Kanye and he was bringing me to a big event where there's a bunch of cameras and then you're hanging out with Antonio Brown, who's like a worse version of Kanye because he actually does it. Um everything Kanye says he'll do, Antonio actually does. Like he's even worse. What I'm saying is you look at when the kids are with Kanye and they look so uncomfortable. And then when you see uh, North with Kim, she looks a lot safer. Following the rapper's claims, Kim responded on Instagram, expressing her desire to resolve their issues privately. Yeah, she's like, go, quit doing it. Go back to banging uncut uncut gems. Oops. Social media is such a great tool, but of course you need boundaries. I think everyone does. And she echoes all that in the new court docs, claiming that she's asked Kanye to keep their divorce proceedings as private as possible. Oh, yeah. But he has not done so. I'll voice my opinion when I think that there's something that, you know, yeah. is maybe done wrong or even if the messaging's right, maybe it, the communication isn't quite there. So this is a clip from 2018, and I don't even know if she's talking about Kanye, but you could literally use this, and it would recap every failed relationship Kim has had. Like, close your eyes real quick and imagine her divorcing Chris Humphreys 10 years ago. Go back. Close your eyes. Or Ray J. Or Reggie Bush. And now... This quote could be about them too, not just Kanye. Opinion when I think that there's something that, you know, is maybe done wrong or even if the messaging's right, maybe it the communication isn't quite there. So that's kind of a sign that maybe Kim is half the problem too. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Oh yeah, this following segment was brought to you by uh by is brought to you by FitsageFitness.com. They actually pay me. Uh, Fit underscore Sage underscore Fitness on Instagram. When I tell you that Devin Prasad is the best trainer in all of the Bay Area, I'm a man of my words. I would not lie to you. If you don't live in Florida, if you don't live in Tampa, and you are going, oh man, I don't live there, so I can't work out with Devin Prasad. That is factually incorrect. If you go to FitsageFitness.com, you can do virtual workouts with Devin. And when I tell you that he is the best trainer around, I'm legitimately saying that. Like, he is 10 out of 10. Happy hour. Happy hour. Finally, I'm one of those guys who can't wait to get to work in the morning. Like a dairy cow. Oh! Oh! Oh, yes! Yes! Oh! Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Happy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. man i appreciate you listening man i appreciate it i don't even know where to begin i don't even feel like recapping my move like my move was so annoying so the apartment complex was like we're gonna renovate your old place you have to either be here for seven months when the previous lease was a month or was a year or you can move out now and definitely be uh, guaranteed to have a place. So we had to take the ladder deal. And like the move was so annoying 
and so irritating that um, all I gotta say is, let's go, Brandon. No! Happy Hot Topic! And if you're a boomer out there, oh, you can get a house. How would you get a house? How about the fact that your generation is why I can't get a house? You out of touch, 401k boomer? Kendall Jenner strips down to her birthday suit and gets Candace. Ah, another Tuesday with her. Trips down to her birthday suit and gets candid about life in the spotlight. Yeah, unlike her boyfriend, Devin Booker, who does not like the spotlight. It was just kind of an emotional thing for me. The 26-year-old model slays on the cover of ID Magazine's she slays it. No, she kind of looks like Don Imus. She's wearing like a cowboy hat, has a weird face. It's not really slaying it. Spring cover and inside she's bearing all, literally. Yep, that's the reality star casually posing in the buff with some strategically placed shadows. Oh, uh, 2014, that would have been hot. Oh my God, the Kardashians were showing off their Photoshop body. Now I'm like, Lisa and no? You see the whole thing. They're a bunch of wimps. Kim's the only OG. She's the only one that actually does it. Everyone else talks about doing it. Kim actually did it. Was it a good video? No. Was it entertaining? No. Does it work? Yes. It's honestly really fun. Kendall also serves up some poolside hotness and goes blonde for the mag. The pics come alongside an equally eye-opening interview. The model gets real about growing up famous. Yeah. Quote, I used to be really angry. You could find old videos of me screaming at the paparazzi for no reason, but also for a very obvious reason. I'm a lot more at peace with things now. Yeah. I feel like back then that was when like Bruce Jenner was around and uh, like the media was following them a lot more. Now that he's, uh, now that she is different, Whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not even trying to, like, like piss off the woke crowd. Like, she went from Bruce Jenner to Caitlyn Jenner. Is that the correct way of saying it? Did I get your approval? Moving on. When Bruce Jenner was around, the paparazzi were always following him around. Now that it's Caitlyn, and Caitlyn is a very classy woman who's very laid back and got away with taking someone's life on accident in a car crash. Ah, whatever. If that was Bruce, a bigger deal. But Caitlyn, no, no, no. You can't do anything about that. Uh, that's a side point. What I'm saying is Caitlyn's very much less chaotic than Bruce was. So the media is not really following Caitlyn around because she's just like every other woman in Beverly Hills. I'm just enjoying the ride. Of course, Kendall's famous family's reality show, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, premiered in 2007 when Kenny was just 11 years old. Gross. Even then, they're like sexualizing. Ugh, God. That's horrifying. They're probably why like 14 year olds are dressed like 18 year olds because of this family. It's really awesome. I mean, not a lot. Rob looks really good, though, in this intro for the first season. Life didn't hit him yet. And you got Bruce Jenner going, I don't want to be here. Literally. It's really awesome. I mean, not a lot of people can say that they work with their family every single day. Uh, it sounds delightful. We have the show together. So it's, um, it's a blessing. It's really cool. Oh, is it a blessing? And keeping up cameras were rolling when Kendall first started modeling. Yes. Yes. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Beautiful. Wow. Wow. When E.T. chatted with... Ke what I love about, like, when people kiss the asses, literally, of the Kardashians for being good-looking, I'm like, yeah, they're hot as hell, but, like, you can literally go to, like, uh, downtown St. Pete on a Friday night, uh, like, first Friday when it's mixed with boomers and homeless people and crack addicts and beautiful people, <laughs> and you're going to find a better-looking chick at McDinnan's than you are the Kardashians, but, oh, they're rich and famous. Kendall and her sister Kylie back in 2015, they said despite their superstar status, they're just like us. I mean, oh yeah, totally. We got everything in common. Bet you guys just don't do anything different than us. I mean, we're normal people. We go through our normal, like, emotional days or like heart rough days. Kendall seems like the only one that actually is aware that she doesn't live a normal life. I feel like Kylie, if she's having kids with Travis Scott, who is a sociopath, obviously she's a little out of touch. Like we're, we're just like anyone else. Growing up in front of the spotlight is 
extremely difficult. Oh, tell me about it. You're growing and you're making mistakes. Oh, it's Kylie from 2015 when she had a personality before she had the lobotomy. <laughs> and everyone's judging you. So that's definitely hard, but. Yeah, everyone does judge you. There's so many blessings that come along with it too, so. Yeah, there's a lot of blessings. Like, I'm not poor like you. Ha ha ha, guess what? No one cares. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. <sighs> but I'm a hypocrite. I'm saying I don't care, and I talk about it. This following segment was brought to you by Rich Keeley, Master Barbershop. Hey, if you want to meet me on Wednesday... You want to get a maid and greet with Ryan Hoppy? I will be at Rich Keeley Master Barbershop at 2 p.m. That is at Salon Loft on Kennedy Boulevard, right next door to McDonald's. But you got to sign up for an appointment. Like, if you want to come by and say what's up, that's cool. But he's going to have an appointment afterwards, and I'm getting my hair cut. But when I tell you that Rich Keeley is the best barber around, I'm being genuine, man. Everyone goes, oh, you're getting haircuts all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of look fresh, bruh. You see my girlfriend? You see me? Yeah, we're both good looking, but come on now. I'm just saying. Happy hour. Happy hour. Oh, this little guy. Buddy, if I had a peanut, I'd give it to you. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. Watch out. Hoppy is about to rant. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Canceled, bitch. You're irrelevant. You hack. Goodbye, Wendy Williams. Never to be heard from again. We can celebrate. Good times. Come on. Wendy Williams is off the air. Woohoo! I can get down to this song now. The best part of her show. My cat just jumped up on my table. Here's my response. How you doing? Happy Hot Topic! All right, let's actually find out what's going on with Wendy Williams, man. Starting in September, I am debuting my own talk show, Sherry! The Wendy Williams Show is coming to an end. Oh, man, it's ruined my day. Not at all. This ruined my day. Not at all. You can tell Sherry doesn't like Wendy. She's not even like being like, I'm replacing the Wendy Williams Show or shout out to Wendy for 14 years. It's all about her. <laughs> I love it. Starting in September, I am debuting my own talk show, Sherry! The Wendy Williams Show is coming to an end. Oh, it is. After 14 seasons, Wendy is signing off amid her ongoing health battles. Uh, that's why, not her mental health problems. Yeah, she's got Graves' disease and everything else. That didn't keep her from running her mouth. And her long-running talk show's time slot will be replaced this fall with a new show hosted by Sherry Shepard. Who's already prettier and likable than Wendy's ever been. I think she's younger than Wendy, and she's already accomplished more. Sherry, who has been a frequent guest host this season as Wendy continues her extended hiatus from TV, shared her big news during Tuesday's episode of Wendy's Namesake Show. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh -huh. I am so excited because I am going to be joining the Debmar Mercury family. That is the company that produces this show and several others that you love. Hey, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody commented on the YouTube video, this breaks my heart. I can't believe this time has come to an end for the Wendy Williams show. Not being able to see Wendy close her own show. Um, This is called karma. What about all the times that the celebrities she talked about during her Hot Topic sound effect or Hot Topic segment? I have the Hot Topic sound effect. I have the better one. Oh, happy 
Happy Hot Topic. Think about all the times she has literally talked about other people's lives and announced things before they were announced. So Wendy not being able to say goodbye on her own terms. Cry me a river. So... I am so excited because when I started in this business, I have always wanted to do a talk show. And I looked at Wendy and I was like, I have more talent than you. But Sherry noted that she's not replacing Wendy because, quote, no one can replace the queen. (laughs) Yuck. I do want to say there have been all of these crazy stories online about me replacing Wendy. You are. I am here to tell you that that is not true. Oh, you're just doing a better show. Because no one can replace the queen. The queen of ruining marriages? Oh, what a sweetheart she is. I think you're already replacing her by not being around. Or by her not being around. Nobody. (laughs) And trust me, I am not trying to at all. It is Wendy's place to share her story with you. But how is she going to? Unless you go on her social media, you're replacing her show. You could go, ah, let me wait till Wendy officially retires. No, that was such a bunch of mumbo jumbo BS. You are replacing Wendy. Oh, but because you say you aren't replacing Wendy, we're going to say you're not replacing Wendy. It's like me getting into a car crash and being like, no, didn't get into a car crash. And the police report says, oh, you got into a car crash and wrecked your car. Oh, you can say I wrecked my car and I got into a car crash, but I really didn't. It's the same logic. You are replacing Wendy. You just don't know what to say. Oh, she's the queen. Do we really want to be queens? Look at the people who have been referred to as a queen. The creepy royalty and Nicki Minaj. It's not really territory I want to be around. The Wendy Williams Show. Someone that covers up pedophilia. And I'm talking about both people. We'll continue through the end of the season with rotating guest hosts. And Sherry then will take over the time slot in September. Hell yeah. And the 54-year-old told viewers that her new daytime talk show. She's 54? Damn, she looks good. Will look and feel a bit different. I thought she was 42, man. But it will still be a lot of fun. Sherry's show is going to look different. I'm not going to ruin marriages. It's going to I'm not going to talk about others because I'm actually talented. I'm actually pretty. I actually contribute something. To feel different. Yeah, so we're definitely feel different. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to have a lot of laughter. We're going to have a lot of joy. <laughs> Call. Wrong button. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> She's saying all the things. She's saying all the things that are implying that Wendy's show is not fun without saying it. And the 54-year-old told viewers that her new daytime talk show will look and feel a bit different. It's going to be nice. We're not going to exploit people. But it will still be a lot of fun. Sherry's show is going to look different. Yeah. It's going to feel different. But we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to have a lot of laughter. We're going to have a lot of joy. And and we're going to laugh because that is who I am. That- <laughs> I love this. That is Sherry. <laughs> And I want to say thank you to the staff of The Wendy Show. The Wendy Williams Show has been without Wendy all season due to her health issues. I mean, I feel bad that her health issues are bad. Like, I would never wish bad health upon anybody. But, like, it was funny seeing, like, the ratings go up when she was gone. I mean, that can't make Wendy feel good. Connected to her longtime struggle with karma, Graves' disease. But in a statement, co-presidents of the Wendy Williams Show producer-distributor said that they are open to reviving Wendy's show if she's interested following her recovery. Oh, yeah, everyone's going to be lining up to watch that. You bring on the replacements and the ratings are higher. Say that out loud to yourself. Let's say it together like an audio book where you're learning how to speak. You bring in the replacements for the show and the ratings go up. And you know deep down that the show's never going to come back, so it's easy for you to say the corporate mumbo-jumbo of, oh, if she ever wants to come back. No, she's not. Quote, since Wendy is still not available to host the show as she continues on her road to recovery, we believe it's best for our fans, stations, and advertising partners to start making this transition now. The big thing, advertising partners. Money, money, money. They were hemorrhaging money, probably. We hope to be able to work with Wendy again in the future and continue to wish her a speedy and full recovery. The hope to work with her? Yeah, that's just mumbo jumbo. The statement read. All right, man. 
well, the last three years that I've been doing the show by myself as a celebrity news show, I've been ripping into Wendy Williams. I've been playing that theme song. And I'm sad that I don't get to rip into her anymore, man. It's been it's been a blast ripping into that talentless piece of garbage. I mean, how can you deny this theme song? Say it like you mean. I'll ruin your marriage, bitch. Because deep down, I am one. Not good because I'm irrelevant. Happy hour. Happy hour. Hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. This following segment was brought to you by WestChasePrinting.com. Posters, business cards, yard signs, whatever the hell you need printed up, man. WestChasePrinting.com has you hooked up. DJ Tone Tampa and West Chase Printing on Instagram. And when you get that invoice from WestChasePrinting.com, tell them I sent you. They were going to already hook you up with a great deal. But when you tell them that I sent you and you name drop me, you're gonna manifest a good deal, bro. Happy hour. Happy hour. Call Hoppy now. 856 49 Hoppy. Whoa, hey. Oh, hey, hey. It's, uh, I mean, it's like a koala bear crapped a rainbow in my brain. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Davidson appears to be taking another break from social media. I would too when I have a psychopath talking about me. One, and I ain't talking about Rover. One week after the Saturday Night Live star ended his years long Instagram hiatus and rejoined the platform, his account, at PMD, was deactivated. Fans noticed the switch up on Wednesday. Hours before, Pete had shared his first and only grid post, a peek from behind the scenes of his upcoming film, The Home. I can't wait to see it because Pete Davidson, everybody hates on him because he's Pete Davidson, but the things he makes, he's talented. He also reportedly changed his Instagram bio to a cryptic YouTube link. It directed to a 10 second clip from the film, The King of Comedy, where Robert De Niro's character says this famous line, better to be a king for a night than a schmuck for a lifetime. <laughs> I bet Kanye, I bet when Kanye saw that, he's like, there's no way that kid is that smart. Many commenters speculated that the clip might be some subtle shade at Kanye West. No, it was shade at, Ob- at I was going to say, oh, Biden. <laughs> ah, that was a bad joke. We're just going to accept the fail there. Honestly, I'd rather have oh, Biden as president, though. Over the past few weeks, the rapper has shared and deleted multiple Instagram posts directed at the funny man. That's what I hate when celebrities do that, is they post this wild, outrageous thing, and then they delete it. Shut it's up! It's like, at least don't be a pussy. Don't be a bitch. If you're going to run your mouth, keep it up. Who is dating Ye's estranged wife, Kim Kardashian. Mm-hmm. In one since-deleted post, Kanye shared an alleged screenshot of a text exchange with Pete, in which the actor appeared to share his hopes to be on good terms with the Yeezy founder and his and Kim's four children. Yeah, Pete just wants to bang Kim and go to SNL. Trust me, he doesn't need you, you know, like bothering him, Kanye. You're 45 years old. Grow up. The conversation has not been independently verified by Access Hollywood, Mm -hmm. but Kanye made his feelings clear, writing in his caption, no, you will never meet my children. And while Kanye's tweeting this, he's banging her, dude. That is, I said this on Saturday on the Michael radio show and Michael agreed with me to a point, but Denise thought it was mean and a few people on Twitter thought this was mean, but this is what Kanye West needs to do when thinking about his obsession with Kim and anybody out there who is pussified from their breakup. I was pussified from my last breakup. There's this thought that needs to go into your brain if you are obsessed with a woman that dumped you, especially when she's disrespecting you. My ex disrespected me. 
Kim Kardashian disrespected Kanye and SNL, guys out there that have been cheated on but are obsessed with their ex or whatever happened. You were disrespected on. Here's what I'm saying. Think about the amazing sex you had with that ex. Think about the best whatever. I'm not trying to get crass here, but remember the moments where it's two in the morning and they want to bang. Remember the moments when, but remember everything. They are doing that with their new boyfriend and they are using all the experience of when they were with you and they are banging that next person and they are thanking the Lord that is probably fake that it's not with you. And afterwards, they are telling that said person, hey, you're better than my previous ex. So they're talking bad about you after banging somebody because they moved on. That was, and that thought, I remember one time I was allegedly high, laying in my bed. I would never do that. Uh, like three years ago, drunk, and I was like, I'm never going to have sex with my ex again. And I found out, uh, like three years later, I found out that was the best thing ever. But it's the moment when you realize, especially because when a dude gets dumped, you have this attitude of, oh my God, how is my ex going to survive without my greatness? Even though they dumped me and they wanted to get rid of me and they disrespected me, they're not going to be able to go through the act of coitus. I was so, oh, she got married and had a kid. Uh, What I'm saying is this, any dude out there, if you are not over your ex, and I even I guess this could go for any gender. This isn't just as a male who's a heterosexual. This could go with anybody. Imagine the most intimate, amazing moments while you're laying there single as hell, alone as hell. Think about it hard. Think about her going down on her new boyfriend and then realize that's never going to happen to you again and that you're spending your short lifetime freaking out over something that's not going to happen. And people said I was rude when I said this, but it's, it's everybody... When there's a breakup, everybody wants to like cuddle the person now. They're like, oh, it's going to be okay. I had Mike Olivero, Ian Beckles, Mike Calta, and Drew Garabo telling me I'm better off. I'm not name dropping, but I'm saying it's these macho guys that, that like told me literally, get over it. And Kanye, get over it. Days later, the artist shared another unverified and since deleted tax exchange, this one with Kim, in which she appeared to urge him to stop going after her boyfriend. Her alleged text read, you are creating a dangerous and scary environment and someone will hurt Pete and this will be all your fault. (laughs) Not funny anymore. Following his posting spree, Kanye shared a message saying he was taking, quote, accountability for his- Oh, by making a post about it, you're being accountable. If being accountable is what he's doing, I don't want to be accountable. Comments and working on being a better communicator. Oh, yeah. Taking your personal screenshots and putting it on your social media where you're the biggest name probably since Beethoven, probably since Prince, the biggest one name probably since Madonna. You're one of the most famous people ever. Oh, yeah. Being a great communicator is taking those screenshots and showing it to your 100 million fans on social media. You're a really good guy, Kanye. You're a class act. Instagram statement, which has since been deleted, read in part, I know sharing screenshots was jarring and came off as harassing Kim. I take accountability. I'm still learning in real time. You're 45. And how are you continuing to learn? I don't have all the answers. I thought you had all the answers. Jesus. To be a good leader is to be a good listener. He's saying all the right things, but I don't really imagine Kanye as a listener. Despite the drama with Kanye, Kim and Pete's relationship seems to be going strong. You don't say. Earlier this month, the King of Staten Island star referred to the reality stars as girlfriend in an interview for the first time. She was also one of only two people he followed when his Instagram account was active. Oh, I love when celebrities do that. I'm only going to follow a few people. And I love when radio show hosts that are only known in one city are like, I can't follow anybody. It's like, well, with that attitude, that's why you're not known outside your city. 856-49-HOPPY. Oh, happy hot topic. She all why? Arby, what's happening? Tristan Thompson and Marilee Nichols' two-month-old son's name has been revealed. According to a birth certificate obtained by Access Hollywood on Thursday, baby Theo Thompson was born on December 1st in Santa Monica, California. I would honestly, and I'm not, should I say this? Should I not say this? I'll say it. 
Dude, it's a sense of humor. I would rather be aborted than have Tristan Thompson as my father. But Tristan is not listed on the document. Marilee Lee revealed in a statement to Access Hollywood that the 30-year-old father of three wasn't included because, quote, he was not present at Theo's birth. Um, yeah, sounds like a really good guy. Um, here's the other thing. Is uh, he now plays for the Chicago Bulls? And what's really weird is, like, he has really bad energy. Oh, wow, a deadbeat father having bad energy? Who would have saw that coming? Uh, but uh, he, like, huffs and puffs whenever he messes up. He'll, like, miss a layup, and he goes... <sighs> and then, like, he shot a free throw, and it, like, airballed, and then he was like... <sighs> and I was thinking that's, prob- that's probably what he does when he finds out he's going to be a father. He's like... He doesn't seem like a good guy. He doesn't seem like someone I'd want to hang out with. The 31-year-old new mom went on to rave over motherhood, telling Access, Theo, my little angel baby. Yeah. I named you Theo because it means gift from God. I had never been pregnant. and it- I thought it was uh, more a uh, gift from being a side chick. I'm not reading this. 856 happy. Why is the deadbeat father who wasn't ever around in the first place why is he not around now? <laughs> I always find the side chick culture to be fascinating. Because in the moment, Jordan Woods, in the moment, all of them, they seem sexy. They seem wild. They seem crazy. And then you knock them up and then a kid comes out and then they're wild. Shut up. And they're crazy. Shut up. Attitude becomes... Oh, there's a kid now in a poopy diaper. You know what I'm saying? Speaking of a poopy diaper, speaking of a shitty person. I have a 12-week-old son. I'm very excited. Yes. Olivia Munn is one proud mama. And she... Um... Ah, I have so much I could say. I don't even know how... I'm she reeks a side chick energy. She like, uh, you know, when you drive by a factory like in Nashville, everyone says, oh, Nashville is such a nice city because there's beautiful women in country music. Have you smelled Nashville? Have you smelled Savannah, Georgia? You know, when you're driving by like a mill or a factory and you smell it, Olivia Munn smells of side chick energy, which would be crappy perfume and daddy issues. I have a 12 week old son. Oh, that's great, buddy. You're so funny. I'm very excited. Yes. Olivia Munn is one proud mama, and she's sharing a behind-the-scenes look at her two favorite guys from the set of Saturday Night Live. If John Mulaney is one of your favorite people, you got problems. John Mulaney hosted the sketch comedy show on February 26th for the fifth time. Wow. SNL is so irrelevant, I didn't know he did it five times. And brought his son Malcolm and girlfriend Olivia along to some of the rehearsals. Side chick Olivia. The new mom. Sh- oh, he waited until he was officially broken up with his ex-wife to begin banging Olivia. <laughs> Put a photo on Instagram of their... I'm such a good husband and I love my wife. Shut the fuck up, you c- The new mom. I'll take that part out. I'm sure to photo on Instagram of their little one looking just like dad. Writing, Malcolm visited SNL Thursday afternoon. Mm. Here he is looking like your uncle being carried out of a wedding because yeah. he went too hard. In another post, she posed in front of John's promotional photo for the episode where he's holding their little one. Oh, wow. They should show his wife crying, realizing she put a lot of money into this creep. I'm just saying. Oh, he, he's got such good energy because he's holding a baby. And gushed about the duo, writing, proud of my guys. John, who welcomed his son in November 2021 mm. with the Violet Actress, opened up about life with a newborn during his monologue. He is a pretty cool guy for someone who can't vote. He has, his legs are like little calzones and I want to eat him. The 39. Weird, man. Nine-year-old went on to share details from his birth for the first time. I think I heard Prince, I think I, oh, I was going to say, I think I heard Prince Andrew say that joke one time, but then I just failed. His name is Malcolm. And uh, let me tell you the the moment when I first bonded the hardest with Malcolm. Uh, We're in the delivery room. Mm -hmm. My girlfriend had just given birth to him and he's crying. Your side chick. Crying a little, so they, they bring him over to this warmer yeah. on the other side of the delivery room. Got it. And they put him on the warmer. We know. Under this big, bright. You had a baby, and you're explaining it. Like, you're so excited. Like, we're going to really believe that you're a good father. 
you're the same dude that was like, oh, I love my wife so much. So it makes us, it makes us wonder if you're genuine. And he's crying a little so that they- I would cry too if you're my father. Bring him over to this warmer on the other side of the delivery room. Yeah. And they put him on the warmer under God, this I want big to punch your face. light. And light is just shining in. Can I just punch you in the punch out for just being a tool? Most hateable face ever. In his eyes, you know, it's really bright. Mm. And he's not, he's not crying or anything. He just looks up at the light and this is what he does. He goes, and it's a face of him squinting. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> I wonder what side chick he banged that night. <laughs> oh, no. He is officially loyal and monogamous to the side chick. He was annoyed, but he didn't say anything. And I was like, that's my son. A polite man in an uncomfortable situation, but he's not going to make a fuss. And this was a really bright light. I thought it was bright, and I'd seen lights. He'd never seen a light before in his life. To see on a baby's face the expression, Jesus, with the light. Is very yeah. You're really killing it with the one-liners. Uh, I want to see if this works. Let's try this out. Olivia Munn is a side chick. Happy hour. Happy hour. Olivia Munn is a side chick. I didn't hear you. Olivia Munn is a side chick. I didn't hear you. Olivia Munn is a side chick. <laughs> Shut up! This following segment is brought to you by Amir Academy of Martial Arts at AmirAcademy.com. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 p.m. The best trainer in all of the Bay Area. Hell, the best trainer ever. Happy hour. Happy hour. Doctors say the life expectancy of the average man is now 76.2 years. <gasps> 76.2, but I'm already 38.1. I've wasted half my life. Half my life gone, and I'm only guaranteed 38 more years. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Or chat him live via the Hoppy Radio app. Ryan Hoppy is the greatest podcaster ever. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. It's time to rant, bitch. Priyanka is her name. Priyanka, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And oh, Rosie O'Donnell, age has not been good to you. And um, I just want to apologize to her and to everyone who thought that it was really inappropriate of me. Can you apologize to me? Because in 1998 to the year 2000, when my mom would pick me up from preschool and kindergarten. I had to see your unfunny ass on TV. Hey, sorry. I'm waiting for you to say sorry to me. You know. Apology accepted? Priyanka Chopra is sharing her take on Rosie O'Donnell's public response to their awkward private encounter. Yeah, I, I don't really see uh, Priyanka, who's a beautiful, talented person, hanging out with someone that's neither. The superstar weighed in after Rosie admitted to a pretty cringeworthy faux pas this week, telling her TikTok followers that she had approached Priyanka and husband Nick Jonas at Los Angeles hotspot Nobu Malibu to yeah. say hi but accidentally made it clear that she didn't really know who Priyanka was after all. <laughs> Trust me, she doesn't know who you are either, honey. Seated next to us at Malibu, yeah. at Nobu, was Nick Jonas and his wife, someone Chopra, which I always assumed was Deepak Chopra's daughter. <laughs> so when I said... Honestly, shut up. Shut up, Rosie. Here's why. Just take this and just begin saying the most outlandish things. No one has talked about you for about 14 years since you were on The View when you were going ahead with Elizabeth Hasselbeck. Hi, Nick Jonas. You were great in Kingdom. And hi, I know your dad. She goes, you do? Who's my dad? And I'm like, Deepak. She's like, no. <laughs> and Chopra is a common name. I was like, Woo! I felt so embarrassed. Didn't you think that Nick Jonas was married to Deepak Chopra's daughter? No. Am I the only one who thought I don't even know that? how that is. You see him obsessed over it. Also, why are you on TikTok? 
You had one job. <laughs> I had one job, my kid said, and I messed it up. All right, so Nick Jonas, I apologize, and to uh, the Chopra wife, I apologize too. Though Rosie owned up to her mistake, viewers weren't here for her failing to not only recognize Priyanka's achievements, but even mention her name in the apology. Whatever. It's Rosie O'Donnell. Who cares? Which prompted, yep, another apology. Fans and famous friends did show support for Rosie on Instagram, with some admitting that they also included. It was every person that watched her growing up in the 90s. Who's going, oh my God, I'm a Rosie O'Donnell fan. Correctly thought Priyanka was deep. My girlfriend raised her hand. Deepak Chopra's daughter, but many others chimed in to share that Rosie's posts only made an embarrassing situation even worse, especially since Priyanka's actual father passed away in 2013, and Rosie should have kept the whole thing between her and Priyanka. Whatever. Uh, that's her trying to get attention. Uh, let's see. All the funny moments from the Rosie O'Donnell show. All right. Hospital with some uncontrollable fungus. That is the most 90s thing ever. That's how loud this video is. Hospital with some uncontrollable. And she's never sounded better. 856 49 Hoppy. Yeah, that's literally, this is the loudest the video goes. That is the most 1990s. And the video that's showing is her having perfume sprayed in her face, which she probably has not had ha happen since that moment. Because that video, it says here, is from 1997. Yeah, she probably has not had perfume on in a quarter century. 856-49 Hoppy. Now the CDC is set to announce new guidance for indoor mask wearing later today. Aero Rush. Can the CDC shut up? I don't think they know anything. They have not been consistent with anything. They've only been consistent with being inconsistent. Jeff has the latest on that. Good morning, Oh, please give it to me. Good morning, America. The latest that they said. That's going to be two weeks. Has the latest on that. Good morning, Ariel. I'm George Stephanopoulos. I'm a liberal douche. Good morning to you, George. That CDC guidance expected to officially mark a major turning point in this pandemic. Sources yeah. tell ABC News that the CDC will no longer recommend masking indoors in public settings. Why? I'm not saying I agree or disagree, but for the last two years especially in liberal places like Illinois. It's a bunch of tyrants, especially that piece of garbage, Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, and Eric Garcetti, the mayor of Cincinnati. The, why was I going to say Cincinnati, California? Because the, they played the Super Bowl there. That's how my brain works. The mayor of Los Angeles, all these liberals in California being tyrants about the masks, and then they're the ones that are at parties now wearing masks. This has been a power trip. Because how are you going to go, oh, you must wear masks to literally, ah, oh, whatever. For many Americans, depending on where they live, CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky tweeting that the CDC is analyzing its data and will now focus on preventing the most severe COVID outcomes and minimizing the impact on the healthcare system. Analyzing the data. No, you're realizing that the cities that have been so tough about the masks, a lot of those politicians might not get reelected. Gavin Newsom, where he almost got recalled. So what I'm saying is this is them protecting the rich and elite who aren't going to get reelected. This has nothing. The info, the research, what is wearing a mask? It probably works. Honestly, I think it does work. Because the people that have been around people with COVID that didn't wear a mask got COVID. The people that wore a mask that were in the same room as people that got COVID didn't get COVID. I know people, the one time I wore a mask and I was working the morning show at The Bone and I didn't wear my mask, I got COVID. Other people that were around that person had a mask on, didn't get COVID. I believe masks work, but I believe people are so sick of them that they're backtracking. Because it seemed to work. I don't think the vaccine works. I'm not trying to be controversial. I find anti-vaxxers to be annoying too. Ooh, the earth is flat. But listen, the masks work because it's preventing things from going in the air, right? It's something over your face. What? Oh, I'm done. All of this. I think the CDC is done too. Remember when we were like listening to them like a gospel? I remember every day it was like, oh, oh, 2020, I won't forget about it. Coming as hospitalizations continue to drop from COVID across the country, down nearly 67% from last month. And of course, many states have already dropped their statewide. Uh, so 2020, what's going on with the war? Uh, I'm not going to play a video about it, but um, let me think here. 
No, I'm going to save that for the end. We're going to talk about the Ukraine in the end because I, uh, I got a teaser for you. I got a little bit of a thing I want to rant about, but first. Matthew Hutchins expressing his grief and anger at Alec Baldwin for comments. He's not the first to express anger at Alec Baldwin. Anyone that's ever met Alec Baldwin wants to punch that douche in the face. Matthew Hutchins expressing his grief and anger at Alec Baldwin yeah. for comments the actor made following the Russ tragedy. Just so angry to see him talk about her death so publicly. Hutchins has filed a wrongful death suit against Baldwin and other members of the production team, mm. telling Hoda he takes issue with Alec Baldwin's account of the fatal incident. Listen, I'm not the biggest fan of the Today Show. I don't know if I like Hoda or not because I have a hard time reading her, but shout out to Hoda for working in the liberal media and interviewing somebody who's against Alec Baldwin. Because that quote-unquote interview by that liberal, one-sided, creepy piece of garbage, piece of excrement, piece of crap known as George Stephanopoulos, that pathetic interview where he asked softball questions and Alec Baldwin got to babble about nothing, shout out to Hoda. She is the OG for interviewing somebody that has an opposing opinion. Because the whole media bows down to Alec Baldwin. It's nauseating. He did an amazing Trump impression. You know who else does an amazing Trump impression? Most people, because he was easy to impersonate. But every week, oh my God, it's Alec Baldwin on TV making fun of everything the president did. But then you have Biden and all the material, and no one makes fun of him. I'm sick of it, and karma reached this piece of excrement known as Alec Baldwin. I'm holding that. I'm just showing. I go, how about that? Does that work? Do you see that? Do you see that? Do you see that? She goes, yeah. Yeah, that's good. I let go of the hammer. Bang, the gun goes. Okay. Baldwin goes out there and talks about these details about how he caused the gun to discharge and yet takes no responsibility. And, and in my mind... Because he doesn't care. Mind, it's just very simple that he was holding the gun and caused it to go off. <laughs> I'm not laughing at that. I'm just laughing at like, it's that simple. But George Stephanopoulos let him babble. Baldwin has not commented on the interview. Has he ever commented about being an awful father? But posted this cryptic message on social media. In Buddhism, being truthful goes beyond simply not telling lies. Oh, shut up. Shut up. Oh, you're bringing religion into this? God, you're a creep. When anyone feels no shame in telling a deliberate lie, there is no evil they will not do. All right. But we do know that this happened. We know that Alec Baldwin took the life of that poor woman, but we don't know how it went down. But we do have this audio. Yeah, it's 15 years old, but this, this never gets old. Hey, I want to tell you something, okay? What? And I want to leave a message for you right now. What? Because again, it's 10.30 here in New York on a Wednesday. And once again, I've made an ass of myself. Yeah, because you are an ass. Try to get to a phone to call you at a specific time. When the time comes for me to make the phone call... You can tell us it's 2007 because he had to find a phone. I stop whatever I'm doing, and I go and I make that phone call at 11 o'clock in the morning in New York, and if you don't pick up the phone, at 10 o'clock at night... Wow, it's almost like when you're being yelled at by your father on a voicemail, you're not going to want to call back. And you don't even have that gun. And when Alec Baldwin's your dad, even worse. A damn phone turned on. I want you to know something, okay? What? Uh, that uh, this is your legacy? I I'm tired of playing this game with you. And she was too, and she didn't call back. I'm leaving this message with you to tell you, you have insulted me for the last time. You have insulted me. You don't have the brains. Neither do you. That's where you gave her the issues. I'm just kidding. Or the decency. Why? As a human being. You would know about not being decent. I don't give a damn that you're 12 years old or 11 years old. Father of the year. 12, 11, 10. You don't even know her age. Or that you're a child. Or that your mother is a thoughtless pain in the ass. Who doesn't... And so are you. Happy hour. Happy hour. Hour, we'll be right back. Oh, yeah. ZRadioLive.com. You listen to Top 40 Radio on the radio dial. Sounds like the same thing. But when you listen to Z Radio, I was just going to give so many critiques, but then I realized to shut my mouth. Shut up, Ryan. Shut up, Ryan. Shut up, Ryan. Let me just, uh, let me just, uh, 
to say that Z Radio Live is the best. I am honored and grateful to be a part of it every Thursday at 5 p.m. East Coast time, 4 p.m. Central. And that's because we do legitimate radio. But are you like your little morning zoo in your local town? I'm going to do this. Oh, yeah. Think about it logically. At 8, 10 in the morning, and you found out you got cheated on, you're going to have a perfect phone line, right? And the first thing you're going to do when you find out you got cheated on is you're going to go, I want to give a bunch of one-liners on a morning show in Fargo. Right? Right, right, right? Think about it. Oh, wait, that's right. It's fake. Happy hour. Happy hour. <laughs> Never mind. Board, 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 board. That represents what I feel when I listen to those calls. Ladies and gentlemen. What's happening? Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh, yeah. Tom Brady is making a movie, and I'm sure if I were to make it or any other person would, it would be average. But because Tom Brady's name is on it, it's going to be the goat of movies. Just saying, just hanging out here, being honest. At 810, we got the traffic and weather, and 815, we got a prank call. Tom Brady is taking his talents to Hollywood. Yeah. The longtime quarterback will produce and appear as himself in an upcoming comedy called 80 for Brady. Oh. The football legend will be joined by a who's who of Hollywood legends. Oh, I thought it was him doing like an HSN type broadcast where he sells his TB12 crap that literally is no different than any other protein powder. Hey, we got 80 for TB. You get 80 bucks. You get, you get protein powder, a t-shirt, and a hat. Frankie co-stars Jane Fonda and Lily Tom will reunite again for the flick along with Rita Moreno and Sally Field. Oh, all the relevant names. The award-winning women Where's Barbara Streisand when he need her? will play best friends and New England Patriots fans on a life-changing road trip to the 2017 Super Bowl. Number 12 will once again sport a Patriots jersey to play their hero. Whatever. That sounds like it's going to be delightful. Sounds like it's going to be a solid 6.8 out of 10. The first full trailer for the Kardashians' new show is here, and we're getting a closer look at- Oh, I thought they retired forever. The family's reactions to Kourtney Kardashian and Travis Barker's engagement. But I called it, and I told you they were just leaving the E! Network. Hulu dropped a new peek at the show, simply called the Kardashians, this week. In the trailer, the whole gang can be seen celebrating Kourtney and Travis's exciting news. Yeah. At one point, Kris Jenner emotionally reflects on how great it feels to see her daughter engaged. I don't believe that sentence because I can't believe that Kris Jenner can show any emotions. And Kim Kardashian hilariously quips that she never got that from her mom before. Yeah. This makes me so happy. She's never had a reaction like that from me, and it's happened like a few times. (laughs) (laughs) Kim has said, I do, three times. She eloped with music producer Damon Thomas in 2000, and they separated in 2003. The reality star married Chris Humphreys in 2011 and filed for divorce less than three months later. Then in 2014, she tied the knot with Kanye West. The two yeah, were married for more than we six were there. years before Kim filed for divorce last February. Yeah. They share four children, North, Saint, Chicago, and Psalm. That's great. You can bring back the Kardashians on Netflix or on Hulu. You could watch the reruns on Hulu of the old show. But yeah, it's average. But this film... The best one. Jay, tweet all I told you. Man, Ray yep. J. What? Let me some moment. When you jacking off to this, uh, and when you really just in your zone. Oh, me too. Happy Hot Topic! Worst tape ever, but man, it made her famous. Amanda Bynes is taking a step to end her years-long conservatorship. What, she's making an OnlyFans? 
The She's the Man star filed a petition to terminate the conservatorship in Ventura County Superior Court this week. You know you're irrelevant when um, they refer to your latest work as She's the Man. <laughs> That'd be like if they were talking about Lindsay Lohan. They're like, the Freaky Friday star. Speak. The petition, which was obtained by Access Hollywood, asserted that Amanda, quote, contends her condition has improved and production of the court is no longer necessary. Ah, uh, she's just copying Brittany. It also cited a capacity declaration. Like, I think Brittany wasn't really that crazy the whole time, but uh, Amanda Barnes? Mm. Mm. Please don't slash my tires. ...from Amanda's psychiatrist, who argued that the actress has, quote, no apparent impairment in alertness and attention, information and processing, or ability to modulate mood and effect, and suffers no thought disorders, adding that she has, quote, the capacity to give informed consent to any form of medical treatment. Man, those eyes, there's no soul there. I would too, if I was probably hanging around Dan Snyder. The petition also stated that Amanda has been pursuing her bachelor's degree at California's Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising. Oh, uh, it sounds like a legitimate school. Bachelor's degree at California. Who am I to talk? I went to a radio trade school. I learned radio. California's Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising after getting her associate's degree there. Ah, uh, that radio trade school. <laughs> I'm like the most successful person to come from there. And that's not me ass kissing. I literally am. And they have not asked me to come back. I'm, I'm fine with that. I remember our teachers to teach us radio were the people that went to that school and graduated and didn't work in radio. <laughs> and they're like, Adobe audition. You turn up the levels. There was people that paid 18,000. I'm lucky my uncle paid it off. Travis Barker and Kourtney Kardashian are so in love. Oh, that's good. In his video, uh, Travis Barker is wearing shades inside, so we know he's a douche. A source spoke out to people about the engaged couple, spilling details about how the pair want their big day to go down. That's not the only thing that spills. Revealing they want it to be, quote, a very small wedding, as opposed to an over-the-top event. Yeah, Travis doesn't really seem like somebody that would want a big event. There are two weekends she's looking at in May. They don't want it to be a press frenzy. She wants it very private with closest friends and family, the source said. Also adding that the 42-year-old Keeping Up With The Kardashians alum is, quote, currently getting sketches of dresses. The Poosh founder and 46-year-old Blink-182 drummer were first linked in January 2021 and later got engaged in October 2021 during a dreamy and romantic rose-filled night on the beach, which the couple posted about on Instagram. Travis and Courtney really can't stop gushing about. I love how nauseating they are where they're like, oh, we got to let everybody know how much in love we are and how edgy we are. Did you hear <laughs> that Aaron Rodgers supposedly is dating Travis Barker's ex? Ugh. That'd be hilarious. Also, I'd be like, get away from me. Get away from me. She's crazy. Adele and Rich Paul are getting cozy on date night. The Easy On Me singer and her sports agent Bo sat courtside for the 2022 NBA All-Star Game in Cleveland on Sunday. The pair looked so in love as Rich sat with his arm around his lady and she leaned into his shoulder. Adele also posed with Mary J. Blige, who sat on the other side of her. This is the first public outing for the 33-year-old and Rich after they sparked engagement rumors earlier this month. The Hello Singer sported a massive diamond. All right, I don't really care about Adele. I'm also seeing here from... Um a few fake news sites that he is not dating Travis Barker's ex, which um, Aaron Rodgers is smarter than that because I would not want to be Eskimo Brothers with Travis Barker. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. All right. We got a few things left to talk about, but I want to tell you that you can listen to Hoppy Radio on every single platform. Stitcher, TuneIn, Spreaker, Mixcloud, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music. Uh, it's all of them. All of it, baby. Google Play Music. Spread the word and let everybody know how amazing and how flawless this podcast is. He never holds back and he speaks his mind. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. It's like a uh, nine thousand dollar prostitute, please. Wouldn't we all? Oh, do you have nine one thousand dollar ones? Yeah. Yeah, good. And if you got an albino, send her up too. And uh, like twenty minutes, I'm gonna be asleep, so get him up here. For what? I had like half a bottle of melatonin, six beers. This whole f bucket of chicken. Oh, the Sandman is coming. Oh, uh, that's right. No, it's happening. You feel happy? When do you think you're going to get married? Um, 
when they can build me like a red river with like gothic. What are you doing, Machine Gun Kelly? I, I, I hate telling this because it makes me sound like I'm name dropping, but I hung out with him for an hour and whatever he's doing now is not him. He's a white trash rapper from Cleveland. The location is hard. Try Which is every person in Cleveland. Find, yeah. Machine Gun Kelly is finding the road to marriage harder than expected. Yeah, bruh. The 31-year-old Bloody Valentine singer popped the question to his now fiance, actress Megan Fox, in January. But he revealed on Thursday's The Late Late Show with James Corden yeah. that he's still confused about the term fiance. A lot's been going on since you were last. It means, you, what, the part that you can't cheat? What's so weird about it? On the show, you are now uh, engaged. All right, I can't play this. You can look it up. I literally, there's nobody more unfunny than James Corden. He literally makes Seth Meyers talented, look talented. A source tells ET that Justin and Haley Bieber believe a big family is in their destiny. Yeah, they're trying to see any way to make that relationship work. They give me like open marriage vibes, like big time business relationship vibes. Says the 27 year old singer and 25 year old model have been in a great place. They're, clo they're in a great place because they're saying they're in a great place. Sounds legitimate. Closer than ever and have a really healthy, balanced, and supportive relationship. Balanced and supportive. That means they're banging other people. 856-49-HUPPY. Actually, I don't even want to play this. This is the most 2005 headline ever. Not the part about Katy Perry because she wasn't famous then. Thank God I missed 2005. Uh, but it says here, Katy Perry walks off American Idol audition over heated debate. First of all, I'd walk away too. If I were Katy Perry, when I realized that I don't have talent, uh, and uh, my hair is awful now. But here's the real thing: is you know that was planned out. Uh, no one's really. I didn't even know American Idol was back on. So that's all they're doing is oh wow, a moment on American Idol where things get a little bit wild and crazy, dude. That is so 2005. I'm just saying. And I don't even want to play this video. Jason Momoa travels with Zoe Kravitz's boyfriend, Channing Tatum, to see the Batman. Oh, that sounds like this douche chills. Hey, bro, you want to have beer that tastes like crap, that tastes like medicine? Let's go to a brewery and have this beer. Talk about our beards. Oh, God, I hate dudes. I don't know, man. Um, let me uh, figure out how I want to word this. Obviously, I wasn't going to end the show without talking about the elephant that's in the room. But like, when you look at everything going on in Ukraine, it really makes you appreciate your life. Like, you look at all your quote-unquote problems, and you're like, uh, those are not problems. Also, um, if you really care about what's going on, shut the fuck up. And I don't like swearing on the show. I just did, though. If you really care about what's going on with the Ukrainian people, shut the living fuck up and watch the news overseas. It's not biased. And look at the footage. Shut the fuck up. Because when you're doing prayers for Ukraine, you're just trying to get likes. You don't really care about the Ukraine. I haven't put up any posts about it, and I'm looking at all the news reports. I'm watching all the news. I'm watching. I'm, I'm learning. I'm not talking about it. I'm not making it about me. There is, I don't even want to give this dirty, rotten imbecile, this hack female wrestler any attention, but she's a face painter, and she had two kids, one with the uh, like logo of the Ukrainian flag and one of the Russian flag, and them looking each other in the eyes, and then they got along in the end. I was like, shut up, honey, you talentless imbecile. And then there's a bunch of dudes out there, so I'll say shut up, dude, because I'm not sexist, and they were like doing like flexing, like... Literally, there's innocent people that are dying at their apartments because they, they think about how easily that could be us. We didn't choose to live here. Unless you moved here and you're like 40 years old and you're an immigrant. You, I didn't choose to have my parents made on my mom's birthday and have me be an accident. And then I live in Arlington Heights. It just happened. So literally, the only thing that prevented you from not living overseas is that you just weren't born here. They're human beings. So you know how much of a creep you are? Also, I look at all the footage of everything going on in Ukraine, and there's one thing. The biggest difference between the Ukraine and Americans, it's not the country, it's not the rules. 
when you look at the grocery shops and the shelters, not the war zone area, but when you look at the common areas, the bars, everybody's relaxed. They all look chaotic, like they're nervous, but everybody's chilling. Here, we fought over toilet paper, and we wonder why the world hates us. Wrong button, but I don't know. Take two. We wonder why the world hates us because I'm now going to have a panic attack about a podcast while people are losing their lives. Americans are a little self-centered. We think we matter. We don't. None of us matter. None of us matters. None of us. I really don't want to end the show, but I do, but I don't, but I do, but I don't. Uh, Here's the thing. Just look at what's going on in the world and be humble. Don't make it about you. You don't always need to let everybody know what you're up to, okay? Just just relax. Nobody cares about you listening. No one cares about you. Maybe your family does when they think about you for 5% of the day, but nobody nobody truly cares. Nobody cares if Happy Hour goes on to be the next big show or if I'm a part-time board op till I'm 50, which I'm not trying to manifest. I'm just, nobody cares if you're listening and you get your job done. Nobody cares but you. So nobody cares when you're trying to impress everybody. Oh, prayers for the Ukraine. Just learn and shut up. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over. And like that.